everyone. So Bradley Beal has gone to the Phoenix Suns in an effort for the Washington Wizards to begin a rebuild. They essentially just gave Bradley Beal away to get out of his contract so that way they could start uh, moving in a different direction. And they have several players under contract that could be very valuable to many teams. And one of those players that I think could potentially have value for the Lakers would be Daniel Gafford. Now, Daniel Gafford is 6'10", uh, 235 pounds, so he's solid, he's built, uh, he's got some good uh, uh, jump and athleticism to him. Uh, he is still under contract for another three years, so again, another salary level move to where it's like, hey, we can take him, uh, we can give you some expiring contracts, right? Lakers have a Mo Bamba, they could just do like a Mo Bamba and a Shaquille Harrison uh, because Gafford's making about $12.5 million. so Mo Bamba's 10, uh, then you have Shaquille Harrison and his like two, uh, three million, whatever it is for, for this upcoming season, boom, those two guys get you right to where you need for Daniel Gafford, uh, I mean... Maybe you have to give up a second or something, but the way that Bradley Beal was just given away, uh, I imagine that you probably wouldn't have to give up much. Gives you a nice young, because he's 24 years old, gives you a nice young center that you could grow, develop, uh, build upon. He's a little more uh, sound than a Mo Bamba. Like Mo Bamba, you can make an argument that Mo might have more potential, right? Because they are basically the same age. Daniel Gafford will be 25 this upcoming season, uh, so you can make an argument, okay, like they're, the, the, like Mo Bamba has more upside, more potential, but for a guy that could come in and have an impact right now, uh, I think Daniel Gafford makes more sense. You could also do something where you go maybe trade Malik Beasley and maybe keep Mo Bamba and kind of use him as a development guy if that's the approach you want to go, but how long is he going to want to just kind of stick around without playing much, where I think Gafford is a guy that can come in and and have a have a bit of an impact right away. Played 78 games last year, started 47, played about 21 minutes per game, averaged uh, nine points and six rebounds, one assist, uh, and just again a guy who's solid. He's not gonna. He's not a guy that's gonna jump out and stand by the page. Uh, he's not a guy that's gonna really stretch the floor heavily. Uh, he doesn't really shoot threes. Period. But the Lakers need a physical body that can bang, that doesn't mind it, high energy can grab some rebounds, uh, play some defense, all of those things. And I think Daniel Gafford is a guy that kind of fits that mold. Uh, he would be cheap. You'd have him locked in for the next several years, uh, and you can kind of go that direction rather than trying to find somebody on the open market that you know may or may not pan out because realistically you're only getting them for a vet minimum where if you could get a guy like a Daniel Gafford, well, now you're in a position to where it's like, okay, well, now we got our center position locked up. He could play next to Anthony Davis. He could back up Anthony Davis. You got a solid rotation there. So now you could go look in other directions to maybe potentially upgrade the roster even further. We'll see what happens with a guy like Chris Paul. Uh, at this time, he hasn't been waived. Uh, there's talks about him getting traded to the Clippers, but we'll see. Uh, it's one of those things. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, but if he does end up getting traded to the Clippers, then fine, so be it. Lakers can look elsewhere. But if not, then maybe you bring in Chris Paul. Now you got your basic point guard rotation locked up. Uh, and then it's just deciding, do you want to keep D'Angelo Russell? Or maybe do you want to go Dennis Schroeder? And you'd still have Malik Beasley and uh, Dennis Schroeder. Or Malik Beasley and uh, D'Angelo Russell. Plus, you'd have your first round picks. Because, again, you're not trading a first for Daniel Gafford. Uh, so maybe you could get Daniel Gafford. Another option as well that you could maybe get alongside Gafford and maybe throw in a Mo Bamba and a Malik Beasley. Go Mo Bamba, Malik Beasley, get Daniel Gafford, uh, and maybe you could get a Kyle Kuzma. Now, the, the problem with Kyle Kuzma is he would have to opt into his contract, right? So that is where the dilemma lies with him. Now, there are talks and reports that the Lakers are kind of right there in the mix and that it's uh it's very possible that he could end up uh joining the Lakers uh, that uh the word that was being used is uh the Lakers are a looming suitor uh so that is a real possibility he would give some great size some great length some great athleticism uh play some solid defense can you know is a guy that understands and knows what the Lakers are looking for could play alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis like that has value in and of itself he's not the greatest three-point shooter in the world but 
again, like one or two guys isn't going to all of a sudden make the Lakers an elite three-point shooting team, right? It's about what's available that's out there. What can the Lakers reasonably get? Like we'd all love to get a prime Clay Thompson on the Lakers, but in the reality, it's just that's not out there. And even if something like that did become available, the Lakers don't have the assets to go get that. You know, like I would love you know, Damian Lillard or something like that, right? Like that would be great. But what is the realistic way to get that? Like what guys are available on the market that we could realistically potentially get and, you know, get them with the assets and just without having to to sell the farm in order to get those guys. Now, Kyle Kuzma kind of leans on the the least probable side, in my opinion. I don't think it's something that, you know, you should just completely write off. But Kyle Kuzma wants to get paid. He's probably somewhere in the 20 to 25 million. Uh, I think realistically he's more in like the 15 to 20 million. But he'll probably get somewhere in the 20 to 25 million. Uh, But would he be willing to opt in for one year uh, so that way the Lakers could retain his bird rights? They get him, he plays. You have another chance to win an NBA championship, and then the Lakers could re-sign him and give him the money he wants. You know, twenty million, whatever. You could have that talk, like, "Hey, come here, take you know, opt in. We'll trade for you. Opt into your thirteen million, thirteen and a half million, whatever it is. Uh, opt into that for just the year, and then we'll sign you to a four-year, eighty million dollar deal or something like that, right? So now you got Kuz." Now you got Rui, now you got Vanderbilt, now you got Gafford, now you got Austin Reeves, Max Christie. You got this great young core of just size, athleticism, switchability, all of those things. You know, LeBron James, when he eventually departs, okay, fine. Well, now maybe you could go look for that other star. Also, Anthony Davis, right? Anthony Davis is a guy that whether he stays or goes, hopefully he stays. Well, then now you have your kind of defensive anchor. You have your star. Now you're just looking for another star to bring around these guys. Unless one of them turn into a star. You know, does Rui take that next step? Does Max Christie take the next step? Austin Reeves? No, do one of those guys do that? That could be a possibility. You never really know. But, I mean, look, Kyle Kuzma, back on the Lakers, does make a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense for the Lakers. Um, And kind of Kyle Kuzma, it's just how badly does he want to be a Laker. And even if he doesn't, I still think the Lakers should go and make a play for Daniel Gafford, right? Like if, let's say, Kuz is like, nah, like I'm not opting in, I want to get my money now, I'm not going to wait a year, okay, fine, not a big deal. If I'm the Lakers, I would still look to try to get Gafford. 24 years old, a guy that can rebound, that can defend, that's a big body, he's not afraid to bang down low, high energy, you know, he's, he's basically a uh, 610 winning Gabriel, right? He's basically uh, the center version of winning Gabriel, but not undersized. He's got the length, size, uh, athleticism, all of those things. And he's young, right? He's a guy that you can continue to grow and develop and mold. And he's probably not going to demand something crazy unless he evolves into just this like top center. But realistically, he's probably going to be a 12 to 15 million dollar guy for the rest of his career. So at that point, like you're in a good position if you're the Lakers getting a young uh, center that can play alongside AD, back up AD. And then if you could get another wing uh, for, again, Malik Beasley and and Mo Bamba, then now you're talking a home run. Um, You know, what would you have to give up? You know, especially if Kuzma's working with you, you probably don't have to give up any first round picks. I wouldn't mind giving up the 17th pick for Kuzma and Gafford. Like if you could get both, like I wouldn't mind going like, hey, like we'll give you the 17th pick for that. Uh, Because then you'd still have like D'Lo, in the 2029th pick, uh, and, and you know, unless you decide to keep D'Lo, which I wouldn't mind that either. But I think it just depends on like what happens with Chris Paul and stuff like that. But do this deal and still maintain flexibility going forward, which I think would be beneficial, especially for this year, uh, because you'd be getting coups for relatively cheap, like almost half the price if he gets 25 million a year. Uh, but again, it's just, it just gets kind of complicated because Kuzmo would have to be willing to accept that and do that. He's young enough. Maybe he still wants to win, right? But I don't know. We'll see. Because if he, look, if he wants the money, he's probably going to a team like the Houston Rockets who will give him four years, a hundred million or something like that. That's probably where he ends up on a team like that. Uh, If he is willing to like, hey, I'll take less in order to try to win some championships here, then 
I could see him, you know, maybe maybe doing something like that. Uh, but you know, because again, the teams that have salary to to acquire a Kyle Kuzma are all middle of the pack to tanking teams. None of them are like legit, like oh, contending teams. Would he go to a team like Indiana or something like that? Maybe. Uh, but he also he also kind of wants to be the guy, right? And I don't really think he is that. I don't think you're winning a championship if he's your first or second best player. If he's like your third, fourth best player, then yeah, I think you could do that. Lakers won a championship that way. But I don't know. Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Yeah, should you get Kuzma? Should you get Gafford? Just get Gafford. Uh, just get Kuzma. Somewhere in between. Whatever your thoughts are, however you feel, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below.